The Fazio family has been washing cars since 1949. That tradition continues today with the third generation going into the car wash business. As the son of Paul Fazio and the grandson of Sonny Fazio, James has car washing in his blood. After a stint on the West Coast, James has returned to his family roots in the Northeast as he makes his first foray into the family business here at Raccoon Express Car Wash. Hi, welcome to Sunny's The Car Wash Factory. Today I'm up here in Seabrook, New Hampshire, a little coastal town up in uh, about an hour north of Boston. We're going to do an interview with James Fazio. He's the grandson of Sonny Fazio. He decided he wanted to go in the car wash business, so they went looking for a site that was underperforming, and needed a real facelift, and a place that he could start a new home. We found this car wash here in Seabrook that was an old exterior car wash with one bay automatic, two self-serves, uh, really run down. The area had gone uh, a little bit cold for a while. Now it's got some new development. The site here now has been converted to an express exterior car wash. Gonna have three self-serve bays and a lot of free vacuums in the back. He's got the Total Shine package, and he's also offering the monthly membership programs. With this program here, James has actually outwashed the previous year's performance in the first three months. He's gonna wash over 24,000 cars in three months. The last, last year, this car wash was in operation, washed only 16,000 cars. It's his first entry into the car wash business, and so far, he's embraced this full on. When you look at the before and afters, you'll see the major facelift to the building, a major rebranding of the property, all the, all the latest technology, lights, total shine package. Customers have been really excited about the wash process. They're raving fans, they're buying the memberships, and I think you're really gonna enjoy this video. We'll meet with James, we'll talk about the process, what he's gone through, what hurdles he had to overcome between street closures, uh, city closures, a bunch of different problems. And you're really gonna enjoy this one. Hey James, it's great to be back in New England. I love the cold weather, but maybe not as much as I used to. But hey, we're up here to talk about car washing. You come from a family that's been washing cars since 1949. Um, you gotta tell the people, what were you doing before this? And then what made you decide to follow the family footsteps and get into car washing? Well, I was working out in Los Angeles doing video production. And to be honest, I was doing everything I could to avoid the car wash business. But uh, I left a job and I was looking for something new. And I went around the country with my brother looking at places. I kept moving forward with it, and now I'm here. That's great. So, um, what was the site like but when you got here? Uh, what made you to look at this site? What made you think it was gonna be successful or have an opportunity to turn it to what it is now? Well, it was the right location. It had a decent layout that we knew we could convert into what we wanted. And uh, the town is kind of developing a lot. There's new retail uh, just down the road. And of all the places we looked at, this is by far the best. Um, tell everybody, how long did the remodel take? So we closed in the beginning of February and we opened up, uh, it was in the middle of August, so just over six months. Yeah, I mean, uh, quite a transformation. We've got a lot of before and after pictures that you shared with us that we'll show on the screen so people can see what we started with and uh, what we ended up with. The site actually looks, looks tremendous. Thank you. Um, I think you did a great job with it, managing the crew and the people and the construction company. We're also about a mile from the beach, right? Um, summer traffic, you got to see already. Um, yeah. Traffic increase in the summertime? Definitely. Yeah? Definitely more people in the summer. Yeah. Um, and really, we're just now starting to get the, the cold weather. We had some rain, I know, last month. It kind of slowed us down a little bit. But the volume we talked about is uh, they, they only washed about 16,000 cars, I guess, the yeah. previous year, yeah. based on the numbers that you had. And, uh, and right now, we're averaging how many cars a month, on average, in the first Few months open? Uh, the first month we did a little more because we had better weather. It was just under 8,000 and then last month we did about six and a half. Right. So we're trending in the next three months. We should be well above that that first year's number, huh? Yeah. And uh, tell us a little bit about the wash mix. What are we averaging per car? Um... So we average uh, right around six dollars uh, before including our monthly passes. Uh, when you add those in it comes down to about seven dollars. Yeah. And what's the customer's uh, response? Customers are very happy. Yeah. They're very pleased and they're all blown away. They say it's like coming to a theme park when they come here. Um, tell me a little bit about the, the seasonality part of it. Um, it's very new for me. Uh, I grew up down south, so it's summer and then there's hotter summer. Yeah. Up here, you know, I've got a taste of everything. Right now it's the fall and this is my first time really having to deal with the leaves. And then when the winter rolls around, that's when we're expecting to really pick up and I'll get my first real taste of snow. And I see you, you bought a plow truck to help keep the lot clean. Have you ever plowed snow before? Nope. 
So you're learning a lot in the first uh, few months of, of business. Yes, sir. Uh, not that there's enough challenges in the car wash business, but uh, in just the overall operations of a, of a multi-climate um, location, it's going to be there's going to be some challenges. Yeah. Well, we'll take them in stride. Yeah. And uh, we know from growing up in the Northeast that the winter time is when we really get to make some some hay. Yeah. Um, you prepared for that? I think so. You know, we'll see on the first day after the snow hits and the salts are, the roads are all salty, but. Uh, I'm sure we'll be fine. Let's take a walk around the property and show people what uh, we've done so far. All right. Hey James, tell us about the menu package, how we came up with uh, the packages. Um, I know we're offering monthly membership programs. Uh, tell us a little bit about how that's taken off and how the customers are accepting that. So the monthly memberships are, are going pretty well. Uh, the customers are very happy with it. They see the price and they are a little confused because it seems too good to be true. Uh, but they've been very happy. It's $36 for the top wash for a month, which is you know twice the $18 single wash pack uh, price. But yeah, they seem to be very happy, and it goes down from there. Most of them are about twice the normal price, except for you know down the bottom two washes. The $3 wash is 10 bucks a month. But surprisingly, that's not really popular at all. Uh, anybody once they uh, see the prices, they think that you know just for a little like five bucks more, you get the next package, and that comes with the wheels. So why not? You know, most people just skip right over the $10 a month. And how about the regular menu? We've got the, the Riley's uh, Top Wash. The uh, Works. The Works. And uh, that Yeah, so the, at the $3, it's just you know your basic wash and dry. When you go up to the 7, it comes with our wheel package. And then at the 10 is when you start getting a wax. And then the 15 is when the Total Shine kicks in. And then, of course, the top package comes with everything at $18. Right. And um, what's the average ticket again? We average around $6 a wash, but that is including the free redemptions from our monthly members. When you factor in the money made from the monthly washes, uh, it comes up to around just over $7. $7. Not a bad number for, for just getting started. Have you done any marketing, any promotions to get the, the site up and running? No, actually. It's just been mostly word of mouth, and then uh, we did wash for free for our first uh, week and a half. And how did that go? What was the volume like on the free? Well, we started off our first couple of days, we were over 400, and then by the end of that week and a half, we were read just under 1,000 those past couple of days. Really? Yeah. And that really helped get the word out there and, and let everybody know what's going on. Yeah, and, and then, we found that the town was really waiting for us with our extended renovations. Everybody that kept coming in said, I've been watching this, I've been waiting for this to open up, so I think everybody was really ready for us. And, and it's a major curb appeal change from what was originally here. Yeah, um, the old building, it used to almost be camouflaged into the scenery, but now we stand out, we pop right off the yeah. street. And customers' response to that, what have they said? They've been super happy. They yeah. say that this place you know, feels like Disney World, and everybody just is blown away by our presentation. That, that's great. Tell me about the free vacuums. We had, that was basically an access road and some coin-op vacs, I think, when we started. Yeah, so we share that with our neighbors next door. Um, it used to just be a couple coin-op vacs, but the place the whole place really looked like a dump, but now this one of our biggest attractions is the free vacuums. Everybody seems to love it, and of course they do, you know, it's free. So the, the, the original site, James, was uh, exterior car wash, traditional northeast exterior car wash with some coin-op vacs. It had an in-bay automatic and two of the self-serve bays running. Yeah. Yep. And then the transition tells what we, what we kept, what we used, and what the plan is for these bays going forward. Right, so as far as the in-bay automatic, we wanted to get rid of that, but to me is uh, just a waste of space. You know, if they're gonna use an automatic car wash, the tunnel's gonna do a better job and we can pump more cars through. So I'd rather just turn that into a self-serve bay. And then uh, I didn't want to do any like flex type seal because uh, the way I see it, I want my business model to scale very easily. And if I imagine if every customer wants to get, you know, extra any detailing and whatnot, what would that mean for how, how I would have to expand my staff and the, the traffic flow here that, that just doesn't, scale well with the exterior express uh, we can whether we wash 200 cars or 1200 cars we might have to hire one more person yeah. it's very simple tell me a little bit about your staff size now what how many people do you have employed uh, right now I have seven uh, six are full-time one is just part-time and we just bring him on on the weekends when we're a little bit more busy yeah. that's working really well for us and what are the intentions now for these three bays so right now the bays uh, aren't operational uh, that, that was our intent, was to get them started uh, right after we finished up with the tunnel. But we had a couple of run-ins with the town where they wanted us to make some adjustments to our water treatment, so we had to take care of that, and now the bay is the next thing on the list. Okay. 
So the, the water problem was there were some, I guess, some old rules that said you could only use so much water. Uh, yeah, and they, they were intent on us having a recycling system, which we weren't aware of at the time when we underwent our renovations. So I had to get that installed as quick as possible, and now that's all squared away. So, so I remember on the phone when you called and said, the city's here and they want to shut off my main city water supply. Uh, explain to the customers a little bit what that's like when they come in and say they want you to turn off your main water supply. Yeah, that was nerve wracking and I had to uh, search my way through the old plumbing to see what I can do to get us running on just our well water because we do have a well here. But uh, I was able to figure that out and we were only closed for about a half an hour. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a wake up call when the water superintendent knocks on your door and say you're closed. Yeah. So. I don't know how many people can handle that and handle it well, but I think uh, over the phone call, you didn't really panic much. Um, you stayed open, which was huge. I think they were surprised. Um, what was it like going back to the city when you finally got the reclaim in, um, the work they needed, the information they wanted about the water usage and, and how you were gonna explain to them what was on well, what was on reclaim, and how much fresh? Yeah, so we had a spreadsheet that detailed every different application of water and what type of water was gonna go into those. And once they saw that broken down and what the plan was and how much water we were going to use of each type, then they gave us the thumbs up. A lot of trucks, we're in New Hampshire. I know, uh, let's just talk a little bit about the control systems. Um, yeah, so we've got the truck bed concierge in, which will automatically read a truck bed and shut certain things off so we're not wasting extra chemical just filling up their truck bed with soap. Yeah. It's a really neat piece of equipment. Cool. And how's the computer working for you as far as keeping track of the, the daily operations, the sales, the labor? The computer's great. I mean, I just go in and I see all my reports. I got all my labor readout. I got all my different wash packages. I know how much my monthlies are making me. It's real easy to read, real quick and simple. And how about the access on the phone as well? So if you're not here, you're, you're in touch with it all day long? It's great. You just check the same website right on your phone, and it's got its own separate, different layout than on the computer. It reads very nice and easy. What are your plans for the future? What, is one enough? Well, we'll see. Ask me again next year. Next year? Okay. I think it's really great that uh, you, you've taken that final step to join the family business and uh, I'm glad you like it and uh, I, I hope you continue to do more. Well James, this is really exciting. I did a case study with your father down in the Liberty Car Wash after we took that one over and, and did what we said we were going to do there and this is just another example of we believe in what we sell, you know, and uh, I think it's exciting to see you doing this here and uh, this site becoming as successful as it is and I got to tell you, it's a big part to you. Congratulations. Thanks for coming. Look, look forward to working more with you as we, as we continue this uh, endeavor. Yeah, it's been great so far. Perfect. Okay, folks, my time here in Seabrook is done. I really enjoyed coming up here and spending time with James Fazio. Um, he's a true novice coming into the car wash business, even though it's been in his blood and his family for, since 1949. He, what he's done with this site and how he's taken control of it and what he's learned in the last six, eight months doing this remodel is unbelievable. Uh, true testament that this business is, is an opportunity for many people to come and, and grow in this industry. We're gonna actually do something new this time. We're gonna do a 360 ride through the car wash that you'll be able to go online and download the app and actually watch a 3D tour of inside the car wash tunnel. Really unique, really great tells you what the customer's feeling and the kind of experience that they're getting when they come to a car wash just like this. Enjoy it, watch it, share it with all your friends. Thank you, good luck, and good washing.